that you have right now. So when we begin, I, yep, I love new things. Love learning <laughs> new things. Always a good thing. Okay, I am watching the list also. Countdown, one more minute and we will begin our live stream. Okay, we are going to be doing PowerPoint today. Yeah, ignore the info on there. We are going to be doing PowerPoint. Okay, a few more seconds, because I don't want anybody to actually miss what we're going to start with, because I will show you things from right from the beginning. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna do PowerPoint. I'm gonna start you from the desktop and from the search window. I am operating Windows 10. I'm gonna have my talking software off for this part, but I will be telling you all the keyboard commands. When we go into the internet, I will actually have to turn it on because then we're going to get into the advanced commands in order to actually download pictures, which most people want to know how to do. So you can hit your start window or start key and you're gonna just type in PPT and you're gonna hit enter and you're going to open PowerPoint. Get your backstage view, you can hit enter or escape to actually uh, go right into your slide. For those who do not understand uh, the layout of a PowerPoint, it is all white, black font, very boring. So what you wanna do is really make it beautiful. The first slide is a title slide, and when you tab one time, it's going to say center, title, placeholder. Almost all of these are gonna be called placeholders. They're gonna have slightly different names to that. So we're just gonna, I don't know, how about title? Yeah, really authentic. You're gonna escape twice, and you're going to tab twice to get down to your subtitle placeholder. I'm already gonna tell you that people do this different ways. There's slower ways, longer ways. I always tell kids, if you're doing it more than one or two commands, it's probably the longer way. So we're just gonna make this really easy. Okay, and escape, escape twice. There's different ways to do the background, and let me show you the absolute easiest right from the get-go. So you're gonna hit your applications key. That is the key, the second key to the right of your space bar. If you do not have one, you're going to shift F10. So I have an applications key and it opens up a tiny little dialog box and L goes right to layout, up arrow goes right to format background. We'll do layout uh, in, on the next slide. So what I want you to do right now is up arrow to format background and you're gonna hit enter and open your format background. So you understand the layout of PowerPoint, if you hit F6, you're going to jump to each window pane. So all the way to the far left is your thumbnails, that's one window pane, you hit F6, you jump into your slide view, F6 again, and you're over into your format background. Now I can tell you, when I hit, uh, when I hit background, I immediately popped over to my format background so I can tab one time and then I can tab again down into my solid colors. And if I down arrow, I can go to gradient, picture or texture and pattern fills, uh, or I can hide my background. What's the point of that? We do want our backgrounds. I'm gonna go ahead and down arrow to gradient. And I can already tell you that gives you a beautiful um, blue violet uh, hint of color and it goes from light uh, down to a darker and then it lightens again. That's a really incredibly easy way to get what you need done quickly if you need to. You can hit C for color at this point, but what I'm going to tell you is I could tab all the way through my options. It's gonna be about 20 tabs, or I can shift tab quickly to go up to the top and jump down to the bottom that it says apply to all. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna shift tab very quickly and I'm gonna do apply to all. And what you wanna do is think about these dialog boxes and window panes as a huge circle. So you can shift tab or tab. So if you discover that you're tabbing a whole bunch of times to get down to apply to all or reset background, try shift tab and you're liable to get there really, really quickly. Now, when I hit uh, apply to all, then when I add new slides, you're gonna get the exact same background and you do want a background otherwise, because white on black, wow, glaring and it's very boring. Now the next thing is this window pane needs to be closed before I exit out of it. 
because if you try to go to your background again, your window pane will actually is already open, so it won't jump you over there. And a lot of people forget, oh, it's not doing what I want, now what do I do? Well, you need to hit F6 to jump back over there. But I'm gonna do Control Space, and I'm going to do C to close that window pane, and it immediately jumps me back into my slide view area. So let's add a new slide, so we're, we are going to, we want to go ahead and do Control M, think more. And those who are visual can immediately see that I have the same gradient background, very nice. But now I want to change the layout. For school, my students uh, typically almost always need a two content holder. The default is a title, and then your placeholder is just one large content holder. Uh, and it's uh, typically not enough. Now, if you just want to insert a picture, that's fine. And I also want to show you how to add an incredible new design feature here. So let's go ahead and tab one time, and we're just going to uh, put picture. And then I'm going to escape twice. And at any time, you can hit your Applications key or Shift F10, and you can hit L for Layout. And it's a, it's a grid view. You have nine options here and title and content is to the right of title slide. So if you left arrow one time, you're gonna hear title slide, and you down arrow once, and you're gonna hear two content. And you're gonna hit enter on that, and your slide immediately changes to two content. So now when I tab, I'm gonna hear my title, and it's gonna say picture. I'm gonna tab again, tab again and uh, you can add info here. And then every time you hit enter, you have another bullet, add information. So I'm gonna hit escape twice out of there, and I wanna to tab to my picture. Now, I already have a, a lot of pictures, so I'm gonna insert one here, and I am going to create another PowerPoint with a uh, design background here. But I wanna show you the picture feature, which is huge in PowerPoint. Now, 365, or 365 plus. Your regular uh, 216, uh, I have not had any students who have that, so they've always had to upgrade to, to 365. So Alt-N-P, insert, Alt-N, insert, uh, menu, and P. If you're not sure how to navigate the ribbon, you are gonna have to hit your Alt key, and you're going to hear your talking software say home. At that point, you can right arrow through your ribbon menu. To go into the menu, though, requires a tab. Now, what I'm going to tell you about that is if you go to the insert key and you tab in, your talking software will tell you the combination to get there quickly, whatever it is. And I'm going to do Alt N P. It will tell you when you tab to picture Alt N P. So what I always do with students is I have them escape out of it and then try the keyboard command. So I'm gonna escape out of it, and I'm going to do Alt, oops, I hit it too slowly, N, yeah, I love that. Okay, so Alt N, and then P, and there's my pictures. So I am just going to pick uh, a picture. Let's see what I want, how about tire repair? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. So I just had a major flat tire that I had to repair, and I had to take a picture of it because it was a brand new tire. Okay, so there is, yeah, let's not use that one. That's actually my, <laughs> I love that, that's hilarious. Let's do another one. Actually, you know what? Let's just go into the internet and grab a good picture. Now, you have many different browsers, and uh, I'm already gonna tell you, Internet Explorer works the best. It is not, a secure browser. We're going to just put that out there. Microsoft does not support that anymore. However, we only use it for pictures because it has to do with pixel size. If you do not understand that talking software uses your video card to uh, work, I'm just going to tell you it does. And so it has to do with your pixel size on your page. So if you're 1360 by 968, that's how many dots, just picture dots on your page. If you blow them up too big, your talking software does not work well. So now let's go ahead and go to Internet Explorer and you can just hit your start key and type in INT and it's going to open. Maximize your windows with start key up arrow because you want all those pixels 
uh, to be used. Now right off the bat, if you're going to start your talking software, which I need to do, I'm going to minimize everything and go to a blank desk desktop. So I'm going to hit my blank desktop and I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, my talking software and I'm going to be using JAWS today. Uh, all talking software will JAWS professional do this magic. Three application, all tab, MSN vertical bar outlook, okay, office, and type, in, breaking news, and late. Now what you want to do is Alt D and you want to go to Google. Alt D, address and search using VinEdit, G O O G L E. Google period C O M com okay. enter. And it will open momentarily. Enter MSN vertical bar outlook office okay. Skype bin breaking news and latest video. I'm gonna hush him up and I just hit my control key to hush him up. I want to go to my images so I can do insert F7 to go to my images. Links list dialog, links list view about one of nine, the my images. Enter images link, Google images, search edit. Now, once I'm in there, uh, I'm just going to do flower, something really nice. I'm ready to tell you, if you do a fabulous search, and if you are completely blind, you need to know how to do a fabulous search. So if it's a flower, if you want clip art, if you want cartoons, um, if you want a daisy, be very specific about what you put in there, and you will do a perfect search. Uh, so I'm just going to put flower, flower and I'm put rose so you can actually see how perfect this is. Rose, enter. Flower, rose, dash, Google search. Search, edit, continue. And I'm going to hush him up. Now the next thing you want to do, because the size has changed constantly on the browser, is do control zero to make sure you're really zero. at 100%. And I was not. Uh, and so now it will actually route my cursor perfectly to the picture that I want. So pictures are called graphics in Talking Software. So you're going to hit the letter G. So let's hit the letter G. Google heading level one link graphic. Now I also have highlight my highlight feature on on my Talking Software, so sighted people can actually come up and see where this cursor is at. This is very helpful for students in school. If they forget a command, anybody can come up and they'll say, "Oh, well, you're on that Google graphic thing. It's not a flower." And they'll say something like, "Get down into your page." Well, the blind student needs to know, oh yeah, G is going to get me down to my page. So I'm going to hit G again. Image result for flower rose link graphic. Now what's nice is, and I can already tell you, that per, that first picture is always going to be perfect. If you do a great search, that first picture will always be uh, great. So my more advanced kids, even my intermediate kids, uh, they will actually do all their PowerPoint and they'll send it to me and they'll say, did I pick the right pictures? And almost always it's perfect. So we're just going to pick that flower and of course if you want to be even more detailed you can have a sighted person say oh no you know go five more in. You need to anybody who's blind needs to train the sighted person. You need to understand these are horizontal rows of pictures and so you're going to ask the sighted person well count along the row and tell me which one you want to go to. And if they say, oh, go four more, then watch what happens when I hit G. Image result for flower rose link graphic. The difference between this rose and the first one is the first one was a bud and it was just slightly opening up. And this is a full flower opened up. Uh, well, maybe that is exactly what you want. And so you're training the person to help you do what you want. You need to route your cursor at this point. I'm using a uh, laptop mode, actually I think, we'll find out very, very quickly. Uh, so I'm gonna do caps lock left bracket. Caps left bracket. And it, I am not in laptop mode and that's how I found out very, very quickly. Now I'm already gonna tell you I lost focus of my page. So what I'm gonna do is caps lock off. I need to turn my caps lock back off and I need to hit G. Image result for flower rose link graphic. Okay, now I passed the rose that I want to be on, so I'm going to shift G back. Image result for flower rose link graphic. Uh, and the reason why I wasn't sure whether I was on laptop or desktop is because I constantly am changing depending on uh, who I'm doing tandem with. Just so you know, if you do tandem with people, the controlling computer always takes control over the other computer. So if you're ever doing tandem with someone and you wonder why your desktop commands are overriding their laptop commands, it's because you're the controller. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, uh, actually, yeah, I could do my insert and JAWS and that would route it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change that feature very easily. So I'm going to do insert J. JAWS context menu, option sub menu, and, and enter, basics, dot, 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 and enter, enter basics. Leaving menus, basic settings, dialog, and there I menu. am. Lo and behold, look at that. Desktop mode, of course, Alt L. 
Use keyboard layout colon combo and laptop. L for laptop and enter. enter. Flower rose dash Google search dash internet explorer. And that's and how you quickly for... change it. Now I'm already going to tell you, you better regain focus of that page on where you're at. So I'm going to insert T to find out where I'm actually at. Flower rose dash Google search dash internet explorer. Okay. Main region. Search results. Yeah, and I am in my flower region, so I'm going to hit G again. Image result for flower rose link graphic. I already know. I'm going to have bypassed that, so I'm going to shift G back. Image result for flower rose link graphic. It has to be selected. So I'm going to do caps lock left bracket to Jaws the virtual PC. Literally, I am literally taking my mouse and I'm flying across my page and I am putting it on that graphic. I'm ready to tell you, you can do that if you get to a page and you cannot activate a button or a checkbox or whatever. You can do that. You can route your cursor and you can do caps lock eight for an, a left click or a caps lock nine. Well, I want to save this picture. So I'm going to do a caps lock nine. Right click, context menu, to navigate, press up or down okay. arrow. Oh, and open you link. heard oh. right click. That's literally a sighted person bringing their mouse right over to the picture and then they're hitting their right click. This has huge options. So if you also want to set a background, this is a great way to set background. If I went down to set a background, my whole uh, desktop would change to a rose, which is also really cool. Uh, so there's a lot of options under, under here. I would just highly suggest going down. I'm just going to hit S for save picture right now. S, leaving menus, image result for flower rose 960 times R, O, S, E. I'm just going to type in rose. Uh, and you can Alt D to actually hear where you're at. So I'm going to do that. Rose Alt D address edit combo E colon backslash D R Denise backslash picture. I don't want E. Okay, so I'm just going to type P I C. -I -C. And I'm going to down arrow to my pictures. pictures. Enter all locations enter. with button to activate. Press the space bar. Find more buttons with. So this is my main picture folder, and it, actually I have it uh, connected up to my OneDrive, so it's automatically backing up my files all the time. So I highly suggest that also, because let's face it, accidents happen all the time, and we lose our information. But if you have a cloud automatically backing up all of your files and folders. You're never going to get distraught when your computer goes down, and it will. So I already typed Rose in my file name. I did an Alt D for my look in, and I typed PIC down arrow to pictures, hit enter and opened, and my list view now is open. I already know that. If you're not sure, and this is the first time you've done it, tab around to your list view and listen to that. So at this point, all I have to do is Alt S. So I'm just going to Alt, Alt S. Alt S. Toolbar. Image result for flower rose okay. 906. So I have saved this now. So I'm going to Alt F4 and close. Alt F4. Malware bike. Now, if my students have a lot to a lot of pictures to do, and most do in assignments, they just leave that open. They'll create a side. They'll go back. Or they'll create, create all the slides, and they know the pictures they need to do. And then they'll just go into Internet Explorer and just get a slew of pictures. Okay, at this point, so I don't have competition from the talking software, I'm going to insert F4 and turn off my talking software. With JAWS dialog, are you enter malware by stray application? <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to Alt Tab and put PowerPoint back into focus. And there's my PowerPoint. Okay, so now let's insert this, this picture. Now, as soon as I would come back, I would insert T to listen to make sure I'm in PowerPoint. And I would insert Tab, tells me exactly where I'm at, to make sure I'm in my placeholder. So I know I'm at, so I'm going to, I'm going to do all N and then I'm going to do P for picture. And I'm going to go ahead and do Alt D to make sure I'm in my correct picture. I'm not, I'm in my E colon. So I'm going to type in P I C down arrow to pictures and enter and open my pictures. Now, instead of tabbing around to my uh, list view, you don't need to do that. If you know the name of your file, you can just do Alt N to jump right back down to your file name and you can start typing in rows. At that point, I'm going to down arrow to confirm I do have the correct um, list view and I do rows.png and I'm going to hit enter and my rows automatically inserts. <clears throat> now, if you're excited, you immediately see what's called design ideas. And this is the big feature that I wanted to go over today is you have design ideas in this uh, right hand side pane. Now you do not automatically jump over there. I know I'm already in my slide view because I've done this enough times. If this does not pop up because maybe you have accidentally closed it and didn't know it and you don't have the option, I always want you to remember Alt Q, Alt Q. I'm going to just show you where that is again, Alt Q. If you do not know how to do anything and you do not have the time to tab through every single menu trying to f find and figure out what this command is, just do Alt Q. And I could type in design ideas right now, so I'm just going to go through the motions of this. And if you're sighted, not sure where I'm at, I'm right up here. 
And there, and I'm down arrow one time, and there's design ideas. Now, as soon as I clicked on it, you noticed it disappeared because what it's designed to do is immediately open or close. It's a toggle. So I want to do Alt Q again, and I'm going to type in design. And I'm going to go ahead and down arrow to my design ideas, and I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to open again. So once it opens, and this is the great thing uh, for blind people is this rose is really too small. Almost all pictures that you are going to insert into your slides are going to be too small. If I enlarge this, and this has been the issue before 365 came along, it's going to, uh, it's going to take it out of center. And I've told my students it moves it down and it moves it to the left. And so what you have to do is either go up or to the right, and it depends on where you're at. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So I'm going to hit F6 and I'm going to jump over to my design ideas. And now I can go ahead and I can go down arrow and no, it doesn't speak yet to you. It doesn't matter. Any slide is truly flawless to use. So I'm just going to pick any slide. Oh my gosh, there are just so many options. They're just so whipping cool. What's so cool about them is they rearrange the slide area. Maybe the title's not at the top anymore. And maybe the two layouts are not right to left. Uh, you might have the title and then um, the information below it and the huge picture of a flower. And actually that's what I want to use is the huge picture of the flower. And I'm going to hit enter on that. And you can immediately see the flower actually takes up, gosh, maybe not quite two thirds of the, of the slide and it looks beautiful. Now, what occurs though is it changes the background of it. So you just need to realize that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my pane. Remember that? So you're gonna do a control space and you're going to do C to close that pane so you're back in your slide view area. Now you need to alt text this. So here's another huge feature. You're gonna hit your applications key and, uh, and actually 2016 has this also. And it had, if you up arrow, you can go to edit alt text. My guess is when I hit enter on this, it will figure out it is a rose. If you're doing like an abacus or something really special, it's not gonna get it. I'm really gonna tell you that. And the easiest thing to do is you can hit edit, enter on edit alt text and just plan on changing it. So I'm gonna hit enter on that. I'm gonna see how close we are. A close up of a flower. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and tab into that a little bit more and I'm actually going to uh, tweak that just a little bit. And I'm going to type in rose on that. Uh, so I can already tell you, it's not always very exact, but you know, if you're in a rush, picture of a rose is absolutely fine. So I'm gonna control space and I'm gonna see to close that. And now when I'm tabbing around, it's not just gonna say object or graphic. It will actually read that graphic to me. Uh, if I want to, now what you've probably noticed if you're sighted is, as I went up here, uh, it actually had changed some of the, yeah, and I just said up here. If I went up to my format menu, what you also want to understand is anytime you insert an image in your menu, you have additional menus open. So the first time I went over to my window pane, I flew across and it actually had changed the shape of the rows. Uh, so I had flown across the bevel. Now, what I want you to show you is if you hit Alt, you're gonna hit JP, which takes you to this special format tab. Now, all the special format tabs start with J. All I have to tell you is, all you have to do is hit your Alt key and your talking software will tell you what that new option is. So you would hit JP and you would open this uh, whole array of different formats. So you can even format your picture even more differently than this. Now I'm gonna hit the letter K and it would take me to all of my options of how the outside, outside shape of this. And I would right arrow along it and it actually would give me different types of bevels. It would give me uh, frames. It looks like I just put it in a picture frame, but I'm actually gonna pick uh, the oval. I really like that and I'm gonna hit enter on that. So always uh, understand that anytime you insert a picture that you get a whole echelon of format options. That is true for tables, uh, any type of graphics. It just has a whole different array of information. So now, 
But I remember I told you that your whole background just changes back to white. So you do need to adjust that background again. So I'm escaping out of my picture and I'm hitting my applications key again, or if you don't have an applications key, Shift F10. And if you're not sure where your keys are at in JAWS, you can actually do insert F1, go into learning mode and just start hitting your keys. Now, if you still don't understand where they're at, combine the FN key. Some computers actually combine the control and applications key to the right of that space bar. So where my applications key is, so it depends on how small your laptop is, uh, the control and applications key may share. So that just means you need to sit on your FN, hit your control key, and it becomes your applications key. So you can just try that out, see if that's your computer. Anyway, I am hit my applications key. I'm up, up arrowing to my format background. I'm hitting enter again. I have popped over there, so I'm going to hit tab down into my options. Solid is my option. I'm going back down to gradient. Once again, it automatically selects that lavender blue highlight. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and apply to all once again. I already know shift tab is going to be faster than tabbing all those multiple times down to apply to all. So I'm going to shift tab. So just know when you go to that design feature, it changes your options a little bit. I hit space bar. I'm going to control space and C to close. Ah, beautiful. Okay, so now you have learned the basics, the hugest features. Alt Q, if you don't know what to do, how to change your background. And these are simple backgrounds. So we're gonna do another one with fancier backgrounds. So I'm gonna start a whole new PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to do Control N. Oh, let me go back to the uh, live stream mode and put that into focus also just in case something else comes up. Okay, so now, and once again, I have to actually alt tab and put my PowerPoint back into view. So let's go over some fancy designs now. Uh, you're gonna hit your alt key and you're gonna, going to go to your design menu and it's G. A lot of these don't make sense. Uh, so you're gonna just have to basically memorize them. So you're gonna hit your alt key and you're going to hit G and visually, uh, so this is for sighted people. If you're a sighted teacher and working with blind students, so let me give you a heads up how you can figure out what to tell the blind student is just look at the letters underneath of it. I'll always get you up to any menu, even in the internet, any place. So you just look at the letters and you're seeing that, oh, design, okay, design is G. So you're just gonna tell your student G. Now you want to go to the themes, okay? So you're gonna look all the way over here and you're gonna see H. And so you're gonna tell the student to hit H and it's going to open up all your themes. What you wanna do is tell them this is in a grid view. You basically have to go up and down, right and left to change your options. Now, as I move my mouse over all these designs, you can see them change, but this it will happen for your student also. So if I down arrow, and I start moving around, you're going to see the features change, curtains, and you're gonna describe them. I can already tell you the kids will find their uh, favorite one that they wanna use. It does not matter what color this is. So if it's a green right now, and you know the student really wants a purple or a blue or whatever, once again, you're gonna hit the applications key and you're gonna to go to format background. We're gonna do that. So I've got bubbles right now. Okay, that's really interesting. I've got blue and pens. Okay, woo, that looks cool. Well, I already like that, so I, I wouldn't want to change that. And that's a black background, and it looks like paint strokes through it, a red and a green and a blue. So I have no desire to change that uh, color background. So let's go to a background that I really like, but I don't really like the color very much. Okay, so this is a lime green. I'm not a big lime green person, but I do like the way it has those geometric shapes on the left and the right. It kind of looks like a curtain that's partially opened on one side and more opened on the other side. So I'm gonna pick that, not really coolly fond of the colors, uh, and immediately uh, sighted people are seeing that the design ideas have opened and they are beautiful uh, to pick my different options. So, eh, well, you already see they're open. You can F6 to get over there also, but I'm gonna show you how to change those colors. So I'm not thrilled with the colors. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna hit my applications key and I'm going to up arrow to my format background. Okay, 
here I am. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tab in. Now, I want you to be aware you have two window panes open to the right of your slide view area because your design idea is open. So if it confuses you and you hit F6, you're gonna hear design ideas and you're gonna like, okay, I thought I got to format background. And I'm ready to tell you, depending on your hardware and software, a lot of my students, they do not pop into this format background area. Uh, or other window panes. So it totally, every computer works differently. So it does not matter if uh, you have the same talking software or Windows or whatever, just realize every uh, computer works slightly differently. Yep, you're easily gonna find two or three that work exactly the same, but if you're a teacher teaching this skill and you wonder why, well, why did that command not work on this computer? It's just different and you have to figure out the differences. So I am in my format background because I know my computer works that way. But there are not uh, there are a lot that do not just realize I also have professional everything so I have professional windows uh, talking software and office products that does make a huge huge difference so I'm going to tab one more time and I'm going to I'm going to keep it a solid color I, I am going to go down arrow just so you can see the options now remember it does not matter uh, what your colors are right now and you can see as I'm down arrow down arrowing between my gradient and my picture it all has that lime green theme <laughs> so uh, I just I'm a gradient person I like those gradients uh, and I could immediately pop to my colors but I'm going to go ahead and go up to solid color and I'm going to show you how to change this I already know I can hit C and immediately jump to color if you don't know that you can just tab to it it's no big deal as soon as I hit C uh, and if you tab through it, you're gonna have to hit your space bar and open it. Uh, but I hit C so it, my colors automatically open and they will talk to you. So if I immediately, uh, and I always tell my kids, well, you have to get down into it. You have 10 columns and 10 rows of information. Uh, and I actually always tell my kids, go up arrow to your primary colors and go to your beautiful primary colors. Well, I'm a big purple fan. Uh, there's blue, and they'll tell you different colors. I'm gonna hit enter on purple. Woo, now that is pretty. So now I've got purple and green on this. And actually, I don't mind that at all, but I can keep tweaking that even more. So if I go ahead, and I know solid is S, I can go ahead and hit my S for solid, or I can hit G for gradient. And now I'm gonna change it to something different. Now you have two color options here. And so let's go ahead and tab down. I'm gonna do it the long way. And you've got hide background, I don't wanna hide that. Here's my preset gradients. And I wanna show you these because these are really, really nice. So here's all my lime green colors. If I wanna pick a pink hue, I can hit that and it immediately turns to a pink. Still those lime green curtains because I've gotta go all the way down to my color to change that. Let's go ahead and keep going here. There's more directions. You can actually change the directions of your gradients. You can go left, right, up, down, diagonals. So you wanna go ahead and go through all of these and just look at your options You can change your angles. And once you get down to your gradients, you can actually up and down arrow and change your gradients. If you have a mouse, you can actually drag your gradients to change your um, dark and light and different colors on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit C for color or immediately pop right down to my color and I can adjust these even more. So if I pick that one, it changes to a slightly different color on that. And oh gosh, yeah, positions, I can change my positions on that and I can go ahead and apply to all and that will apply to all. Maybe you don't wanna have it apply to all. So we're gonna go ahead and close this Oh, one more thing I want to show you. If you do your Alt and go back to your format, so you need to close your panes. Again, Control-C to close, close those. And you're going to pop back into your slide view area. Your format opens again. You're going to hit Alt, and you're going to hit that JD, okay? And uh, that is your colors here. So these are more colors, more shapes. So you tab in there, you've got text fill, shape fill, shape outline. So these are a whole host of other types of fill colors. Maybe you want a maroon in your shape fill. I have my title placeholder selected right now, just so you know. 
uh, and it will you can change all your shapes now if you hit escape out of that and get out of that and just to your slide view you still have all your slide design ideas so you do alt G and of course you go back to your uh, H color or you can even go if you already have the design you want you can go all the way to the end and you can go to F for your format background color and it will give you a, a, another whole host of ideas but you'll notice how much easier it is the applications background so much faster so I just want you to know your applications key is so much faster on that okay so let's do control N let's do another one uh, let's pick a different design so let's do alt and let's do G and of course we're doing H on this we're going to down arrow and we're going to right arrow and uh, and pick purple once again I love violet colors my design idea is open so I'm going to hit F6 to pop over there I'm going to go down and pick a totally different type of um, design idea which will change it uh, and so now I have left to right so I've got click subtitle on here so let's go ahead and control space C to close and now tab and I've completely lost focus. There I am. That's the reason why talking software is so handy. I'm very dependent on talking software because it will immediately tell me where I'm at. Otherwise, sometimes visually, I'm just tabbing around and not completely sure on that. So I'm gonna click to add title. So I'm just gonna say title here. I'm gonna escape, escape twice. I'm going to tab and it's popping. Oh yeah, it's popping to the outside. That's what it's doing. Well, that's very interesting. Now click to add subtitle. And I'm just going to type by me, keeping it easy, and escape. Now watch what happens when I control M. It adds a completely different structure. So instead of the whole thing being purple, it is just the title on that. Maybe I want to adjust that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my applications key, and I'm going to format my background. You just have to play with this. There's just so many options here. Tab into fill, tab into solid. Uh, if I go down to that gradient again, it's going to give me lavender options and I want to keep with that lavender option so I'm going to tab and watch now I jump to my preset gradients I'm going to change my preset gradients I'm going to go ahead and go down a little bit more hit enter on that they're darker gradients this is linear I want to go ahead and go down to oh gosh yeah let's do radial and direction I'm going to change on my direction also and I popped off of it and I'm going to hit spacebar and open let's go ahead and go right arrow it's going to change the direction and your talking software will tell you this it will tell you uh, what directions and gradients that you're changing you can actually hit your spacebar on your colors and these uh, all the colors have changed and they have the rose and purple uh, hues which are really really pretty so you can down arrow into that and you can choose different uh, hues and colors I'm going to just choose a lighter hue on that and I'm going to go tab to apply to all and spacebar and then of course immediately uh, your your pages your title page is just changed to a more amber uh, well, fuchsia definitely a fuchsia color and uh, and go ahead and do control space C to close that pane uh, okay so those are some major features and changes the design feature huge once again alt Q type in design if you're not sure uh, you have it you can check immediately to see if you do and if you do you have the right one if you are blind and you have to do a lot of PowerPoint presentations, I highly suggest upgrading so you can do these all independently and really add some really nice features. Okay, so that is this. If you have any questions, just go ahead and email me at yourtechvision at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And of course, any other uh, presentations you'd like to see in the future. And it's great been talking to you. And of course, I'm always hoping to get better at this live streaming as I move along in my adventures also. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.